Good morning, Dr. Wallace, teachers, parents, guardians, learners, and a special good morning to our leaders of 2021. I would like to thank all the parents and guardians who have taken time out of their busy schedules to join us on this momentous day. Today is a joyous occasion, as it signifies the starting of a new era of leadership at Weinberg. I wanted to also take this opportunity to also remind everyone whether you're in grade 8 or grade 12, whether you'll be receiving a badge or have braidings on your blazer, you matter. We all matter and we need to work collectively to ensure our school lives up to its potential. Matrix, we will be the key players in implementing and driving the change we hopefully want to see in the school. And grade 8, you will ensure the continuity of the change we may try to implement this year. This year won't be easy. We will have setbacks along the way, but let us lean on each other, not only as a team, but as a family. I would like to end off by asking everyone to be fully present in this moment and truly take time to acknowledge and celebrate your leaders, but also take time to acknowledge and celebrate yourselves as navigating such challenging times is an achievement in itself. I couldn't be more proud to be part of such an amazing family. Thank you and remember, you all matter. Good morning to the grade eights, the staff who are behind me, the parents and guardians who have joined us, and the matric class of 2021. And welcome to this very special occasion and ceremony. I have to just add that it's particularly special for me as this is my first induction ceremony at Weinberg Girls High School, even though it already feels like I've been here for, well, close to forever, actually. <laughs> Around September of last year, approximately six months into the global pandemic, Forbes, Forbes magazine ran a feature article that asked the following question. What do countries with the best coronavirus responses have in common? Their answer, women leaders. Germany, Taiwan, New Zealand, Iceland, Finland, Norway and Denmark are all led by women. Forbes magazine's assessment of the truth of why this uh, assessment of why this is the case is the following. Firstly, the truth. Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, stood up early and calmly in the pandemic and told her countrymen that this was a serious bug that would infect up to 70% of the population. It's serious, she said. Take it seriously. She did, and so they did too. Secondly, what they had in common is decisiveness. Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand was early to lock down and crystal clear on the maximum level of alert she was putting the country under and why. She imposed self-isolation on people entering New Zealand astonishingly early when there were just six cases in the whole country and banned foreigners entirely from entering soon after. Clarity and decisiveness are saving New Zealand from the storm as it did for Taiwan, Iceland and Finland. And thirdly, all of these women instituted empathy and care. As written in the magazine, Norway's Prime Minister, Ernest Solberg, had the innovative idea of using television to talk directly to her country's children. She was building on the short three-minute press conference that Danish Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen had held a few days earlier. Solberg held a dedicated press conference where no adults were allowed. She responded to kids' questions from across the country, taking time to explain why it was okay to feel scared. The originality and obviousness of the idea takes one's breath away. How many other simple, humane innovations would more female leadership unleash? There is to no time now to compare these responses to those of the supposed strongmen leaders of other countries who have used fear and authoritarianism to try to control their populations. I'm sure that we can all think of many examples. But more importantly, however, is to consider what these leaders, whoops, pause for a second. Thank you very much. So what is important is to pause and to consider what these leaders have shown us, that it is possible to lead with both strength and decisiveness as well as kindness and compassion.
Now, grade 12s, I'm not saying that the style of leadership is easy. None of it is. And if it was, then everyone would be doing it. But it is possible with a conscious, committed effort and always keeping our school values at your core and as a guide. I'd like to suggest that the starting point in your leadership for the year ahead is to recognize that people matter. And I promise you that we and I did not share notes beforehand. People matter. A simple way to do this is to learn people's names. When I say simple, I don't mean easy. Learning names is hard, and it takes practice and a willingness to put yourself out there and sometimes to get it wrong, as I do frequently. But this doesn't stop you from trying, and I believe that this is worth the investment and the risks and is an essential part of being an effective leader. Look across at the grade eights opposite you. How many of their names will you know by the end of this year? There's a challenge. And it's not only enough to know their names, but you also need to learn to pronounce them properly. Secondly, I'd like to encourage each of you over the course of this year to invest in the building of teams. Once again, this is hard and it takes courage. It is so much easier in matric to live in your own bubble and to only take care of yourself, especially when faced with the academic pressures of the year ahead. And building trusting, supportive teams takes hard work and courage. But as one of my favorite commentators on leadership, Simon Sinek, explains, courage in this sense is external as it involves building relationships. And it is these relationships that will provide the external support when you have to face the massive external pressures that you are undoubtedly going to be coming your way over the course of this year. By investing in teams, inadvertently, you are investing in yourself and your support structures for when the going gets tough. And at the same time, by taking people along with you, you in turn are strengthening and building them and investing in their futures, in their tutor groups, the school and the world in which we live. Once again, look at the grade eights opposite us. Therein lies the teams that you need to build over the course of this year. And this brings me to my final point, to all the grade 12s present here today, as you are all leaders by virtue of your position within the school. Be the leader that you wish you had when you were in grade eight. Be the leader that you wish you had had. Grade 12s, you might not remember all of the grade eights seated in front of you right now, but rest assured that they will remember you. I can still name many of the prefects of Pinelands High School way back in 1986 when I was in grade eight or, and the parents will remember this, standard six as it was known back then. Fortunately for you, you only need to think back to five years ago and not another century like me. What was it that made the matric class of 2017 stand out for you? Or perhaps is it the individuals that you remember best? Hopefully these memories and thoughts are all positive. But if this is not the case, then what can you do to leave the space better than it was before? What can you do to leave the space better than it was before? What is going to be your contribution to the ethos and culture of Weinberg Girls High School? Unlike in previous years, we have already had the privilege and joy of watching you own the space as you've already been in these positions for a number of months. You are already demonstrating who you are as a grade and as leaders, both individually and as a collective. And I'm filled with a sense of optimism and hope for all that you are going to continue to contribute to this year and the positive legacy that I know that you are going to be leaving behind. All of the best. We are looking forward to celebrating this year ahead with you. Congratulations. We're now going to be moving into the induction part of the program. This morning, it gives me great pleasure to award to the deputy heads of Hostel, Kanyasile Kotani and Swanlim Wezo. And then to congratulate the Head of Hostel 2021, Linda Mena. We now move on to the induction of the Representative Council of Learners. First, the Grade 9 representatives, if I can ask you to come down, please. Hannah Hill, Hanan Salasa, and Zara Vollenhoven. 
the Grade 10 representatives, Taskeen Hussein, Mase Mananga, and Florence Amare. The Grade 11 representatives, congratulations to Yasmin Adams, Pollyann Carlos, and Leila Poole. As they come forward, just to announce that Yasmin Adams is the SGB rep, Pollyann Carlos is the RCL secretary, and Leila Poole is the second of the SGB representatives. And then congratulations to the Grade 12 representatives, Siba Tokwe, Okukhle Sofile, and Buyisile Nkubalani. Okukle is the vice chairperson of the RCL and Buyi is the chairperson. Before the three grade 12 representatives walk down to have your photograph taken, I'm first going to ask Buyi if she could please come forward to read the RCL pledge on behalf of the RCL and see Bernard Kukle if you wouldn't mind standing for a moment. As an elected member of the Weinberg Girls High School Representative Council of Learners, I hereby pledge my support to the task of promoting good relations among lear amongst learners, between le learners and educators, and between the school and the community as a whole. I vow to represent the interests of all my fellow learners to the best of my ability. I will strive to set a positive example. Through this, I aim to promote responsibility, leadership, and learning, and I vow to uphold and refine our school's traditions. Good morning. We now move on to the induction of the heads of houses and matric leaders. And I'm going to ask the five leaders of Amakwe to come forward, please. Head of house, Karina Austin. And then the matric leaders, tutor group NM, Gemma Hoskins, KS, Tiro Fanikirk, LB, Kyla Peters, and NS, Clarice Conradi. <laughs> Our next house is Aristea, and the house coordinator is Mr. Hunter. Head of house, Rabia Gaby. And followed by the matric leaders, tutor group CU, Gabriella Spriggs, RB, Phoebe Andrews, PB, Ashley Stevens, and WP, Salma Francis Adams. And we move on to Azima. House coordinator is Mrs. Adolf. The head of Azima, Danielle van Beek. And then the matric leaders of Azima for tutor group MA, Taylor Gassett, AW, Ronnie Africa, JB, Amber DeVette and AM Megan Speedy. Our next house is Ferraria. House coordinator there is Mrs. Smith. And the head of Ferraria is Nomvela Majola. And the four matric leaders in Ferraria, tutor group GJ, Laika Tazrit, KH, Jamie Galant, NW, Savannah Solomon, and SP, Isabella Bürgelink. <laughs> Our next house is Ikala. The house coordinator is Mr. Simon and the head of house, Emma Herbert. Then our matric leaders, tutor group LK, Kezia Flores, LL, Carla Reinecke, OA, Jada Pulsa, and DN, Buisile Ngubelani. <laughs> the next house is Jackalberry. The house coordinator is Miss Lawrence. And the head of Jackalberry is Megan Frost. And the four matric leaders, tutor group JN, Courtney Sternfeld, ST, Abby Fraser, T.H. Yushra Khan and Y.M. Zuha Abada. <laughs> the following house is Marula and the house coordinator is Mr. Zitzman. The head of Marula is Alicia Arens and our four matric leaders in Marula for tutor group VM, Akila Hassan, H.L. Anika Dix, T.S. Andrea Dukok and C.K. Amina Ali. And last but certainly not least, we move on to Mawana, and the house coordinator is Ms. Fala. The head of Mawana is Luana Lima, and her four matric leaders for tutor group CV, Nazira Modak, SJ, Kaylin O'Kelly, SF, Emma Press, and SL, Zakia Sali. Thank you, Mr. Burrell. 
We now move on to the induction of our heads of pillars and portfolios. And these four pillars, the certificates and badges, are going to be handed over by the teacher heads of the pillars. And so first, the academic pillar with Mr. Burrell. And it gives me great pleasure to call upon Jamie Lodovic. For well, the cultural pillar, handed over by Ms. Pierce, Bernadetta Cabot Block. The service pillar, handed over by Mrs. Pavid, Jenna Morgan Mouton. And the sports pillar, handed over by Ms. Diaz. Congratulations to Gina Walker. We have two portfolios, and it gives me great pleasure, with the assistance of Mr. Burrell, to call up for the communications portfolio, Erin White. And the sustainability portfolio, congratulations to Summer Drayden. And finally, it gives me huge pleasure this morning to call up our head of school, who is going to be reading the pledge on behalf of the new leaders and then address all of us. Congratulations for the matric class of 2021 to Siba Tokwe. To all, to all, parents, guardians, Dr. Wallace, teachers, grade eights present, and to the matric class of 2021. Could I please get all school council members to stand as I read our pledge? I undertake to serve my school loyally using the best of my ability, whatever special gifts or talents I may have. I lead by example, always displaying the values of my school. Uphold the policy of the school offering fair, honest, constructive criticism, cooperating with my principal, my educators, to bring about beneficial changes when these are needed. Remember that wherever I go, people will always assess the standards of my school by what they see me do. Thank you. A memory that comes to mind today, a day where we, as a matric class of 2021, are celebrating our peers getting leadership position, is leadership in primary school, which surprisingly was five years ago. We're slowly getting older. <laughs> this memory has taught me one of the greatest lessons, and to this day, I refer to it. In my primary school, we had student leaders, and these were grade seven learners that were chosen by teachers to lead a particular grade per term. So everyone in their primary school career aspired to be this great leader. So as the grade sevens of 2016, we all desperately wanted to be these leaders, even though we didn't know what leadership meant or what being a leader was all about. But we wanted to be these leaders because we saw the privileges that leaders got. Leadership was seen, leadership was only seen through privilege. It was seen as having authority over a grade and also, and importantly seen, as being able to miss class if needed. <laughs> I soon learned that, though, that with great power comes great responsibility. And so to me, leadership didn't look too great. <laughs> and so the day of the announcements came, and anxiously, I waited for my name to be called. It never was called. <laughs> I didn't get the position, and because I was never handed a badge, I thought I could never be a leader. <laughs> because I didn't get a badge stating my position in school. But it soon came to me that simply being a grade seven learner meant that I too had to lead by example. And so from that day forward, in all I did, I thought to myself, how can I be an example? On the sports field, I played with great sports womanship. In class, I learned with respect for my peers and teachers. And from then on, I told myself not to view leadership as having authority over people, but rather as an opportunity to have great and positive influence over a group. And soon, I felt like a leader. No, I didn't have a badge, but because I was an example to those looking at me, I was a leader. Leadership is about more than a badge. It's about, it's about the person behind that badge and how they're willing to take responsibility in all they do. 
So today we're not just celebrating the handing over of badges, but are celebrating each and every individual of you who has pledged to take responsibility and lead by example. So to all leaders present, let us lead this year by example. And though I'm not too sure how to lead perfectly, I would say by just embodying our school values, we can have a successful year. And I'd also just like to state that leaders aren't just those who are being inducted today, but all sitting here today and all matrix. And so to the matric class of 2021, let us be remembered. Let us be remembered as the class with great and positive attitudes, a class that cared for its peers, a class that when they made mistakes, which we sometimes will make, learnt and grew from them. A class that honoured its school, and importantly, a class that had fun in their last year of high school. <laughs> my advice as the head of school for 2021 to the whole grade is set goals for yourself. My goal in leadership this year is to be inclusive in all I do, and importantly, uh, to be a leader that I too would be proud to have. This year, the school council working with the RCL leadership uh, will strive to make sure that nobody feels left behind. As COVID has been rough on each and every one of us, it is important that we are all mindful. And so as school council, we ask you, grade eight to grade 12, be mindful in everything that you do. Take everyone into consideration. Respect your peers and teachers in all that you do. And as the uncertainty of the academic year rises and you start to feel pressure, remember this quote said to be, said to me by my grade eight natural science teacher, Mrs. Hermans. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> it's an honor to lead the leaders of 2021 and a privilege to lead my school. Thank you. Thank you very much, Siva. And I think this is probably the appropriate moment to mention that I was not a prefect in primary school, nor was I a prefect in high school. In fact, the only leadership position I managed to achieve in high school was the captain of the second squash team. And there were only two teams, which is why I got into it. So thank you, your words really resonated very powerfully with me. This now brings the, uh, our induction ceremony of 2021 to an end. And then to the grade 12s, as we've already said before, you've got a marvelous year ahead of you. Grab it, run with it, um, work smart. I think as Siva said, um, this really is, well, it's not only the beginning because you have already begun, but this is part of the journey and I really wish you everything of the best for you.